welcome to the Rochester Institute of Technology, where tonight a sea of orange is expected as the hometown Tigers welcome the nationally ranked Air Force Academy to the Gene Policini Center. Number two, Adam Brubaker, the hero from last weekend as his overtime goal helped the Tigers earn a split with Holy Cross. Brubaker will join Stacy Pench at ringside in just a few minutes. You are watching RIT Sports Zone pre-game live, presented by Taylor the Builders. Highlights, analysis, live interviews, and much more on the way as we get you set for face-off between RIT and Air Force at 7.05. Good evening, I'm Kevin Roach, and we're so glad you could join us here tonight for RIT Sports Zone pre-game live. We welcome our viewers watching online and across New York State on Time Warner Cable. Well, after last Friday's 4-0 loss to Holy Cross, RIT head coach Wayne Wilson called his team fragile, saying they needed a blowout win or an overtime victory to boost morale. Well, the head coach got what he hoped for last Saturday night in the series finale with the College of the Holy Cross. First period, Tigers on the power play. Liam Karens, the shot. Eric Brown, the deflection for his team leading 15th goal on the season. But take another look at this one. What a goal. Watch the puck off Brown's stick. It deflects up and into the air. It seems like it stayed up there forever. Paul Barafato of Holy Cross never even saw it goes up and over his head for the goal the top play in college hockey right there this week later in the period some miscommunication Mike Rotolo leaves the puck behind the net Michael Lappin takes it and beats Rotolo with the wrap around to tie the game at one this one would be decided in overtime Gene Battaglia had the call Valenzuela down low to Powell Karens Brubaker the blast there it is game winner Adam Brubaker Two to one. There you go. Oh. Brubaker with his sixth goal on the year. No doubt his biggest. RIT got the much needed two points with a 2-1 victory. So here is the up to the minute standings in Atlantic Hockey. Canisius on top by three points after beating Niagara on Wednesday night. Air Force just three points behind. Both have locked up first round buys. After that, you might say it's a bit of a mess right now. Army is third. Robert Morris fourth. Holy Cross in fifth while Mercyhurst and RIT are tied for six. The top five get a first round bye. We are joined by the head coach of the RIT Tigers, Wayne Wilson, and coach, seems like we talk about injuries every week. You had an addition to that list this week with Gabe Valenzuela being out for the weekend. Yeah, uh, so he joins the, the, yeah. the, the other crew there. Uh, he'll be out this weekend. He's week to week. Uh, it's nothing season ending at this sure. point. Uh, so we'll monitor his uh, progress and see how he is. Uh, uh, going into next weekend, but he'll be out for this weekend. You said last week that this team needed an overtime win or a blowout win. You got the overtime win. What has that done for the confidence of this team? Well, you know, it, it makes practices a little bit easier, coming to the rink a little bit easier during the week. And, uh, you know, I, I thought we played pretty solid both games. Um, you know, we've let some games slip away. I thought uh, particularly on uh, Saturday night, our penalty kill at the end of the second, uh, capitalizing on the power play when we did uh, were all big for us and just getting the win uh, uh, for our spirits here. I, I thought our uh, our young defensemen who we're really kind of uh, focusing on here yeah. a little bit because uh, there's a lot on, on their plate right now. I thought they were all very solid and uh, it's going to be important that they can continue to uh, take steps um, with the, the two Norrishes out. So I think, uh, not, not to put everything on them, but I think if we can get solid play out of those four freshman defensemen, uh, and then the rest of our team, uh, you know, the other guys have to continue to play well. We've got to get good goaltending and yeah. special teams. Those are all other factors besides uh, the thing that we can't do anything about, and that is uh, playing a very young defensive crew. Absolutely. Well, you, you saw this team, Air Force, back in November. You lost both games, tight games. Coach Sarah to Torrey told me this morning that his team isn't in championship form yet, but they're playing really well. What makes this matchup difficult for you? Well, I think uh, they're very well, well coached. Uh, first, I think uh, Frank does a great job with his club. I, they don't beat themselves. They play within themselves. So I think you'll see just consistent waves, a consistent play, uh, one through four in their front and uh, one through six back on defense. Uh, and I think that's what makes them good is they, they don't beat themselves. They're very, very consistent in what they do. They, they, they play to their identity, which is kind of a safe a play, yeah. uh, defensive-minded. Uh, but they do get a lot of pucks to the net. They try and get traffic to the net. Uh, you don't see a lot of fancy plays. You see just uh, 
good solid plays on their part and uh, have a lot of respect with uh, what they do and, and how they do it. A tremendous rivalry throughout the years. Hard to believe Air Force hasn't played a regular season game in this building and it's three years old. This is their first time here. Yeah, um, a quirk of the schedule <laughs> and we have uh, gone to Air Force every sure. year. So who knows when that's going to turn around. That's up to the league scheduler and uh, we've kind of got the short stick there, but that, that that's fine. So. Uh, we had a playoff series here with them uh, a couple, couple of years ago that we yep. won both games, so that was big for us. And so they're, at least some of their players, are probably their freshmen, uh, or I'm sorry, their seniors, are the only ones to have been in this building yep. at one at one point. So, uh, but we got to take advantage of uh, home ice here on Dr. Dessler's uh, <laughs> appreciation night. Uh, great job uh, he has been for our university, our hockey program, but just uh, the Rochester community as a whole. Uh, I. I I can't thank him enough, and uh, we've kind of already said our piece with him before his <laughs> schedule gets so hectic that Absolutely. we may not see him around uh, as a hockey staff. Anyways, uh, you see him all around campus, but trying to get his ear. But he's been great, and we really appreciate everything he's done. Well, we appreciate your time. Best of luck here tonight against Air Force. Coach Wilson joining us here on pregame live. Speaking of the Air Force Academy, they were out on the ice here this morning. The Falcons have gone unbeaten in 14 of their last 16 games, the second-best winning percentage in the nation over that span. Over the years, RIT and Air Force, as I mentioned, have produced some thrilling contests. And Falcons head coach Frank Serratori expects this weekend's games to be no different. And we got a little thing with RIT. We go back, we came to the league together. We've, uh, uh, we eliminated them a number of times um, er, er, early in our championship history. They've eliminated us the last two years. So uh, I, I, they're, they're, we're, they're not on our Christmas list and we ain't on their Christmas list. And uh, when it's Air Force and RIT, in the last 10 years, we've been in the league 10 years. Um, eight of those 10 years, either Air Force or RIT has, has represented the league in the uh, national tournament. So there's a lot of pride. And I, you know, I don't want to say there's a, it's bad blood, but there's a lot of respect. And, and, and uh, uh, when, when the season starts, uh, our guys circle uh, two names in the league. They circle Army and they, cir and they circle RIT. And no doubt RIT circles Air Force on their schedule as well. Over the last 49 meetings, 38 between these two teams have been decided by two points or less with 15 of those contests ending in overtime. It's another big weekend, as we mentioned, for the Tigers. And Stacey Pengen is standing by ringside with the hero from last weekend. Stacey? Yeah, that's right. Joined by Adam Brubaker. And unfortunately, the injury bug still plaguing you guys. Uh, 54 games total you guys have missed due to injuries when you add up all of the players how over half of those in the month of January so you had the big goal last weekend what are you hoping to do for yourself and as a team taking on Air Force a very uh, a very strong foe I think I just hope to play well again play well defensively and hopefully chip in offensively with uh, maybe a goal or assist or something like that what was the difference last week it, it felt like a different game you guys looked like the old RIT Tigers again had a little bit of a spark. Just a little bit more energy, a little bit better vibe in the room and on the ice, and definitely worked to our advantage. What is the one thing you guys have to do to beat this strong team? Get pucks to the net and put them in, hopefully. Thank you very Thank much. You. Good luck. Back to you. All right, thanks so much, Stacy. Well, there's much more to come here tonight. Up next, we'll check in with John and Gene to get their thoughts on tonight's big time matchup. Plus, we'll take a look back at a decade of excellence in athletics under RIT President Bill Dessler. It's all straight ahead. You're watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live.
There have been a lot of great games between these two teams over the history of this matchup. The Falcons lead the all-time series 25-20-4. and RIT a slight edge over the last 10 meetings. However, Air Force is the king when it comes to conference championships. They've won five, including three straight between 2007 and 2009. We welcome in the guys who've had the pleasure to call a few of those Atlantic Hockey Championship games for both the Tigers and the Falcons. Gene Battaglia and John DiTullio. And guys, RIT hasn't made its path to another championship, an easy one, but with three games left, they still have a shot to finish anywhere from third to ninth. Good evening. Yeah, it's that yep. tight, Kevin. Uh, thanks uh, very much. As uh, the Tigers, John, a 2-1 win over Holy Cross. Is that the type of win that can propel them? Here? Well, Wayne's hoping. Yeah, they felt like they got their mojo back after that, but then they lose Gabe Valenzuela. This team is dealing with major injuries. On the other side, Air Force was dealing with injuries. All their guys now are back. But as Kevin just mentioned and we alluded to, all these games are tightly contested. That's why who makes the fewest mistakes could come away with the two points tonight. Well, it, the schedule not working in the Tigers' favor here after that win over Holy Cross. Now they're playing a nationally ranked team here in Air Force. They really don't have no. a weakness, John. Talking with Wayne, they've got four lines. They don't have one line. They've got four lines. They've got a pretty good goalie. They're a veteran team defensively. They're 8-2-2 two two since January 1st. They seem to be ascending at the right time. Well, they roll the four lines, the right winger Himley, their leading scorer. There's no question about it. They've got guys on this team. When you look at what they can do, look at those numbers. I mean, big time playmaker. When you look at Himley, they've got uh, Hake, and then Matt Serrator is coming back after missing four games with an upper body injury. If you're gonna look at one line, only got four, that top line's pretty good though. Well, for the RIT Tigers tonight, the question is, where's the offense gonna come from? We mentioned, gave Valenzuela out of the lineup. Eric Brown had a deflection goal in front. Just get him to the front of the net, John. That might be one of the keys tonight. That's a key. Greasy goals, I think, is what it's going to take. But if Brown can somehow put that big frame uh, in front of the net, 6'2", nearly 200 pounds, it may take a deflection. I think it's going to take a greasy goal or maybe a few greasy goals if the Tigers are going to steal two points tonight. Well, if you're going to look at the keys tonight, John, we'll take a look at the keys for RIT and for Air Force for that matter. And, yeah, puck possession, always a key. Against this team in particular, they protect the great AN. They like to get out of their end quickly. So you got to cherish that puck. And they've got to limit second chance. I'm talking about Air Force. The one thing talking with uh, Wayne this week, Starrett will give up rebounds. And if they can capitalize, that is huge. And RIT's got to play with an edge. If they want that home ice advantage, they want to at least get a bye. They've got to come out tonight and play with a chip on their shoulder. I'll give another key here, John. What's the great equalizer in hockey? It's when you get a good goaltending performance well, tonight. And this being the last weekend at home in the regular season for Mike Rotolo. And Mike has played well against Air Force. You look at the two games back in November, I know they lost. But in that series, you look at the numbers, RIT out shooting Air Force 61-40, to although they lost two one-goal games. You can see two really good goalies tonight. Well, it should be fun. It's always fun, Kevin, when RIT <laughs> and Air Force get together. Absolutely. We'll look for you at the top of the hour. Well, tonight is Dr. Dessler night here at the Policini Center as he will drop the ceremonial first puck. RIT's president will retire in June after leading the Institute through a remarkable decade of success. Quickly discovered he was serious about sports. His very first hair dye challenge was aimed at increasing interest in basketball, a stunt he didn't need to do for men's hockey. I didn't really feel the need from the games I've gone to. Uh, we get great student turnout and support for those games. But in just his first year in office, President Dessler did recognize the need for a new hockey arena. Has the program outgrown its current facility on campus? Well, I think we could be moving in that direction. This is an embryonic process. We're just beginning to look at options. We, we uh, currently don't have a plan. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have a date. We don't even have the money. But under his leadership, a plan was in place two years later. So our plan is to, over the course of the next two or three years, to try to raise $15 million uh, to be the cornerstone funding for a new hockey arena at RIT. I'm also very, very pleased to announce that uh, two of our alums have stepped forward to make the first really significant gift towards this fundraising campaign. 
will be named the Gene Policini Center. Dessler would then secure a four and a half million dollar donation from the Policini Family Foundation and Tom Golisano. In 2012, the university broke ground on the facility and unveiled the new Gene Policini Center in the fall of 2014. What do the donors like Tom Galasano and the Policini Foundation mean to the institution of RIT? If they don't step up, it doesn't happen. That's the way it is, okay? You can't, you can't build this thing entirely on institutional funds. It doesn't even make any sense to do that. You can't ask students to pay tuition to build a hockey arena. So that's a tremendous, tremendous step. And they step forward because they believe in RIT and they also believe in the Rochester community. President Dessler has been a part of some of the biggest moments in RIT sports history. The Cinderella story of the tournament so far, the Rochester Institute of Technology out of Rochester, New York. They're going dancing to the Frozen Four in Detroit. And the Rochester Institute of Technology Tigers will be your 2012 NCAA Division III Women's Hockey Champions. I am more proud than I can say. They earned this championship the old-fashioned way. They just worked hard for it. And it's wonderful to see all that hard work get rewarded. It's a great day for RIT, great day for the team, great day for the coaches, just a great day all around. Over the last 10 years, RIT's number one fan has been a staple at athletic events no matter the sport or the season. Just last week, he was on the bench as an honorary coach of the women's basketball team. You know, I'm undefeated now as a women's basketball coach. That so, is you know, incredible. Amazing, isn't it? 1-0. <laughs> President Dessler would do almost anything to show his school spirit. He even ended up dyeing his hair for the sport he never thought he'd have to, just to secure the Policini Center's first sellout crowd. I just want to build school spirit, that's all. You know, it's really just a, an issue of trying to, especially get the freshmen to understand what it's like to really be an RIT Tiger. And I'm certainly one myself, and I want to sort of uh, spread it around. President Bill Dessler has presided over a decade of excellence in athletics. The men's hockey program has made three trips to the NCAA tournament, including that, including that 2010 Frozen Four. The women's program won the Division Three National Championship, then moved up to Division One. RIT's Division Three programs joined the Liberty League and have won numerous conference titles and have made many NCAA appearances. And the 675 student athletes this past semester combined to record a 3.31 grade point average, the best in RIT history. Well, Still to come on the program, we'll tell you how you can help one local boy in his mission to collect 5,000 coats this year. Plus, the RIT women's hockey team welcomed their throughway rivals from Syracuse to the Policini today. Highlights are on the way. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. It is a big weekend at RIT. The annual Breeze Fest is upon us. Of course, the weather not exactly cooperating with temperatures near 50, but we got a good one for you on the ice tonight. Number 19 Air Force against RIT. These two teams responsible for eight of the last 10 conference championships. Well, earlier this afternoon, the RIT women's hockey team returned to home ice to begin a home and home series with conference and throughway rival Syracuse. The Tigers coming off a two game losing streak after dropping a pair against Robert Morris last weekend. We picked things up in the first period, not the start RIT wanted just over a minute into the game. Jessica Sibley puts in the rebound for the Orange. They had a one nothing lead, but the Tigers answered just two minutes later. Kendall Cornine, the nice backhander in front for her 12th goal on the year. We were tied at one. Orange controlled things from there, out shooting RIT 16 to one in the period as Alyssa Burris scores. Syracuse would hold on to win 5-2. to two. Same two teams tomorrow afternoon. That one in Syracuse. Tomorrow, just a reminder, the RIT women's hockey team will wrap up the regular season here at the Policini next weekend against Mercyhurst. Our live coverage begins at 6 next Friday night on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel 26, while Saturday's coverage of Senior Day is at 2 on Time Warner Cable Channel 98. Well, we all know how harsh Rochester winters can be, but thanks to one local boy, many in our community are now more prepared to brave the elements. There are many 10-year-olds that play hockey, but Colin isn't your average 10-year-old. So how would you describe Colin for people that don't know him? Colin is a very kind little boy who likes to help others. 
Colin has been helping others since he was just five years old. Um, well, I saw a kid without a coat, um, and I was ringing the bell for the Salvation Army. So um, it was two weeks before Christmas. I'm like, I want to give that kid my favorite coat. What, how did that make you feel seeing, seeing that young boy without a coat? Um, I felt sad because, you know, all the stuff that we have and, they, and he doesn't, it just makes me feel really bad. What was your reaction to that? I was really taken back and surprised that he wanted to do that. Actually, I was pretty blown away. That idea led Colin to begin Warm Hearts, Warm Bodies, an organization that collects coats and other winter essentials to help those in need. The Open Door Mission is the primary group that gets the coats, hats, and gloves. And um, recently this year, we started outreaching to the Blue Star veterans in Canadagua and the Rochester City Schools. And we also have um, a lot of private people that contact us privately just this time of year, um, especially Christmas time. They are in need of warm coats for their kids and families. Could you have envisioned it taking off and, and being as successful as it's been when he first came up with the idea? No, no, and he's inspired not only myself and adults, but youth hockey players um, in the area and across the country. Colin has inspired many, including his teammates and opponents too. They've all joined together to help the cause. That's wonderful, I, I like that, that's great, because um, uh, they just know that uh, hockey, that your hockey teammates are family. Where do you see this going in the future? Well, he has said from day one that he wants to do this until he goes to college, <laughs> and then he will find another little boy to take over, and then he will continue on after, and that's, I'll just support him as long as he wants to keep doing it, so that's, that's all I can do as a mom. Tiger fans, you can help Colin tomorrow night. Warm hearts, warm bodies. We'll have a donation bin here at the Policini Center. And when you buy one ticket, you'll get one free with a donation of a gently used coat. So far this year, Colin's collected 1,500 coats. He hopes to reach his goal of 5,000. Well, it's almost game time here at the Policini Center. We'll send you back upstairs to John and Gene next. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. We are back with you tomorrow for Senior Night at the Policini Center. Our coverage kicks off 6.30 with RIT Sports Zone pregame live presented by Taylor the Builders. Be sure to join us as we will carry the on-ice tributes to the seven RIT seniors live before the Tigers face the Falcons. You can watch RITSE.com or Time Warner Sports Channel 26. Just a reminder, if you're coming to the game, it is RIT Sports Zone Senior Card Night and Poster Night. We'll be distributing posters and player cards of all seven seniors while supplies last, so get here early tomorrow. Also on the show, we are uh, out of the 4,000 seats here at the Policini Center. One has always stood out in the crowd. We'll share how this orange seat is a tribute to a man named Green. That's tomorrow on the broadcast. Well, that will do it for us. John, Gene, and Stacy are up next. Enjoy the game, everyone. RIT Sports Zone Live begins now. <laughs>